So hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to teach you this topic, which is referred to as photoelectric effect. Uh, this topic is uh, chapter eight of your course book. So I'm going to follow your course book closely. So if you've got your course book, just have with it with you because uh, the main points that I'm going to talk about, all of them are depicted in your course book. Now let's start by the objectives. What is it that I want you to achieve by the end of this video lecture? Number one, I'd like you to be able to describe photoelectric effect. If somebody asked you what is photoelectric effect, what statement are you going to put down? I'd also like you to describe experiments which demonstrate this effect. And you're going to discuss two experiments. I'd like you to describe factors that affect this effect. What are some of the factors which affect photoelectric effect? And I'd like you to explain photoelectric effect using Einstein's equation of photoelectric effect. In fact, a major part of our calculations will be based on the on this equation. I'll expect you to solve numerical problems related to this equation, Einstein's equation of photoelectric effect. And I'd also like you to define a few physical quantities such as work function, threshold frequency, threshold wavelength, and so forth. And in problem solving, we are going to look at graphical treatment of some of these effects, some of these factors which affect photoelectric effect. So let's start by asking ourselves, what is photoelectric effect? We At this moment, we have already studied, studied another effect referred to as thermionic emission, where we said if a metal is heated sufficiently, it's, we are going to remove electrons from the surface of that metal when it is heated. Do you remember the name of that effect? The term given to that effect is thermionic emission thumb ionic emission. So photoelectric uh, effect, just like the term suggests, there is the word photo, which comes from light, and then electric, which are electrons. So just like we would remove electrons from a metal surface by heating the metal, in this case, when we shine light on a metal, or when a metal is irradiated with the light or electromagnetic waves of suitable energy or suitable frequency, then electrons can be removed from that metal surface. The electrons are removed from the metal surface when this surface is irradiated with light, they are called photoelectrons. Photoelectrons. So, we are going to put down a statement like this. When light electromagnetic radiation of a certain wavelength or suitable wavelength or frequency falls on a metal surface, electrons are emitted. The electrons are called photoelectrons and the phenomenon is known as the photoelectric effect. So we can say that photoelectric effect is a process of removing electrons from a metal surface when the metal surface is irradiated with the um, electromagnetic radiation of suitable frequency. The process of removal of electrons from a metal surface when that surface is irradiated, is irradiated with electromagnetic wave of suitable frequency. That is a statement that answers that question. What is photoelectric effect? So for one mark, you should be able to answer that question. Now, how do we demonstrate photoelectric effect? We are going to get two metal plates. We connect a dry cell to the in series with the two metal plates. The two metal plates are separated by a short distance. Then we connect a, a circuit in such a way that we have a dry cell and a galvanometer. And then we are going to irradiate that metal surface with UV radiation. UV, we are going to use a UV lamp. 
to produce that radiation. And this is what we are going to, to do. So, in your textbook, you'll find that it is clearly described, arranged two metal plates, A and B, as shown in the figure. When the circuit is complete and UV radiation is allowed to fall on the metal plate A, here, you find that the galvanometer G is going to deflect or shows a deflection. When a an, an analog electric meter deflects, it is evidence that there is current flowing through it. And if there is current flowing through it, there must be a potential difference which is making that current to flow. Now, before the two metals are irradiated with this uh, UV radiation here, because this one is a UV lamp, because before the metal is irradiated, of, or if we cover this light with a piece of glass or with a piece of um, opaque material, you find that there is no more deflection showing that current flows when the metal is exposed to UV radiation. That is the only time that current is going to flow. So if we cover this radiation or if we switch off the radiation, then current does not flow. So definitely, this is what is going to happen. Electrons are removed from the surface of metal A and then because metal A is connected to the negative potential of the battery or the dry cell, it is negatively charged. So those electrons which are removed from that metal, they are repelled by the same metal and attracted by the opposite metal because there is a positive potential connected to plate B. So those electrons which are removed from here are going to be accelerated to plate B. And therefore, as the electrons move that way, current is going to flow in the opposite direction. And actually, when you look at this uh, battery or dry cell, the way it is connected, this is the positive side. So it must be sending current in this direction. So remember here, we're talking about conventional direction of current. So current will flow in a direction which is opposite to the movement of electrons. So the movement of these electrons in this space complete this circuit and that is why the current flows we are going to investigate this circuit much much later but this is one of the setups which can be used to demonstrate photoelectric effect what is the explanation again the explanation this explanation is given in your books and we are told that when uv radiation with enough energy falls on a metal surface, some electrons in the metal lattice absorb this energy. We are going to talk about that energy of that incident radiation when we talk about instance equation of electrom of photoelectric effect. So some electrons in the metal lattice absorb this energy and are dislodged. To dislodge is to remove, to remove from a slot. So from the metal surface. The ejected photoelectrons are attracted by plate B. You must be very careful on how you connect the dry cell. Always connect the dry cell with the positive plate, this one, or with the negative plate being the one where we irradiate the plate with electromagnetic radiation. Be careful about that. So when they are attracted by plate B, it causes a current to flow. As a result, the galvanometer shows a deflection. That is what happens. And this simple experiment here can be used to show photoelectric effect because if you switch off the lamp, the galvanometer does not deflect. The deflection disappears. That shows no more electrons are being produced. Again, when you switch it on, you find that there is a deflection. What will happen if you reverse the terminals of the connections in such a way that now B is connected to the negative and A is connected to the positive? What do you think is going to happen? Yes, you are right. The electrons which are removed from here 
are going to be held back by that positive plate here. And it is only the ones which with enough energy, with the strongest kinetic energy or with the highest kinetic energy that are going to reach plate B. If that potential is big enough, then no current is going to, to flow in the circuit because no electrons are going to leave plate A. Again, we are going to talk about this much, much later. If this voltage is such that we can be able to vary it after, after interchanging the terminals, then we can be able to investigate something we refer to as stopping potential. And that is the business of factors affecting uh, the, the photoelectric effect that we are going to study later on. Let's look at the second experiment where now we use an electroscope. We are going to use two electroscope. One is positively charged, the other one is negatively charged. Then on top of each one of the plates, we have a clean zinc plate. Clean zinc plate. We can clean the zinc by rubbing the zinc with sandpaper in order to remove the oxides which are on the surface of the zinc plate. That's why we clean them. And then to each one of that setup, we are going to irradiate the zinc with a sodium vapor lamp. Again, that one is going to produce UV and that UV is going to remove it. We expect it to remove electrons from the zinc plate. Now, what do you think is going to happen to each one of these electroscopes? Again, let's look at this simulation here that I've created to see whether you can be able to understand that concept. So this is what we do. We have a negatively charged electroscope and a positively charged electroscope and we have a clean zinc plate placed on each one of them and we have a sodium vapor lamp irradiating UV on that plate. You could also use um, white light because in white light we have some element of UV. Actually, the best source of UV is bright sunlight, direct bright sunlight, because it's got all the colors. And then when you go to the other end of the spectrum, just next to, to V, violet, you're going to get UV. But if you're doing the experiment indoors in the lab, then you use a sodium vapor lamp, which is a good source of UV. So this is what you do. What are the results? You find that over here, when these electrons are removed from the zinc metal, remember before we switch on the sodium vapor lamp, this zinc is actually positively charged because it is in contact with a positively charged electroscope. In fact, we place the zinc plate on the on the cap of the electroscope and then charge the electroscope positively. We can charge it by induction. In this lesson, I'm going to not going to waste time to, uh, to show you how we charge the electroscope positively. I'm assuming that you know how it is charged positively and negatively. So that is what we do. Here, the zinc plate is already negatively charged. This one is positively charged. What do you think is going to happen? When the electrons are removed from a plate which already possesses a positive charge, and re we remember that electrons possess a negative charge, these electrons, although they have been dislodged, they will be held back to the metal plate because the plate has got a positive charge. So it pulls the electrons to itself. Okay, so the electrons are going to remain on that plate and no deflection will be observed here, showing that no electrons were removed from the zinc plate. But over here, the electrons which are dislodged from the zinc, they possess a negative charge and the plate itself is negatively charged. The zinc itself already possesses a negative charge. The electrons which are removed from the zinc plate are going to be repelled from the zinc. They're going to be 
to be given more energy by the repulsion which is going to encounter here. So here, uh, once those electrons are removed like that, then the electrons, remember, a negatively charged electroscope possesses excess electrons. So electrons are going to be removed from the zinc, uh, from the electroscope. The electroscope which is negatively charged, it's going to lose electrons, so it's going to be less negatively charged and the leaf is going to fall. So here, there will be no observable change as far as the leaf is concerned, but here the leaf will fall. And this is what we are going to see. So for this one, the leaf will fall. For this one, the leaf will not be affected. We conclude that no electrons are removed from this zinc plate. Because the ones which are removed, they are held back and they are not allowed to leave the zinc because the zinc is already positively charged. But over here, the electrons which are removed, they leave and the ones which are in the electroscope, they are conducted all the way to the zinc and they suffer the same uh, process. They are removed from the zinc plate. And those are some of the experiments that we can do to demonstrate photoelectric effect. Let's look at other items in this particular topic.